So if we're going to the Fort Worth Botanic Garden, more properly the Japanese garden, I'm thinking, what do I have in my landscape that's Japanese? Well, a ginkgo tree is Japanese. The only problem is that we're taping a couple weeks ahead of air date, and my little tree doesn't look like it's alive, but it is. It's been here 25, 30 years now. They're not fast growing, but they're beautiful. Interesting thing about ginkgo, two interesting things, three interesting things. The branching is very dramatic, easy to identify. Secondly, the leaves look like pine needles that have been fused together. Wish I had one to show you. Come back, we'll do that. Beautiful fall color. That's the third thing. I'm out of time now, but uh, the fourth thing is they bear their fruit in cones. You don't want that fruit because it doesn't smell good, so get a grafted male ginkgo. Enough of me. Let's go to the Fort Worth Botanic Garden with Stephen. Konnichiwa, or welcome to the Japanese garden inside Fort Worth's Botanic Garden. We're gonna have a talk with Scott Brooks, the senior gardener here. We're gonna check out the garden. You ready? Let's go. It's magnificent, it's, uh, spectacularly beautiful. It's uh, exquisitely well designed. A, a Japanese garden that's uh, built into its own little hidden valley, network of beautiful paths and ponds and waterfalls, koi carp in the, in the pools. It's spectacular, beautiful place to work. It was a gravel quarry, that's right. Also, a trash dump, a squatter's camp. Uh, there were springs down in here uh, with some cisterns and uh, some of the old boys that, uh, that used to keep cattle here when this was uh, a rural area used to bring the cattle down here and, uh, and water them. Well, most of the Japanese maples that we have are wild, seedling Japanese maples. Uh, most of these older ones that are quite large were propagated by seed or from seed. Uh, by the uh, uh, original uh, builders of this garden back in the uh, late 1950s and 1960s. Let's walk around and take a look at the place. Absolutely, let's right. have a look. After you. This was at one time what I would refer to as a, uh, a climax phase um, hackberry forest. The trees were so thick in here that uh, uh, the understory uh, actually uh, had been shaded out in many places. And uh, we opted not to replace those hackberries uh, after they went down. And uh, by opening holes in the canopy that allowed better light penetration to the understory, uh, those became opportunities to establish new plants and to revive old ones that hadn't had enough light. And so uh, the garden is, is looking much better than it, it did before. And Japanese gardens are, are designed to have a, an enclosure, uh, an exterior enclosure and also some softer enclosures within the garden so that uh, a person entering the garden and going into the interior of the garden will have a sense of being increasingly removed from the outside world, a sense of seclusion. And uh, uh, this garden uh, uh, definitely accomplishes that, if by no other means, by the, the topography, the fact that it's this little valley that's surrounded uh, by high terrain and separated from everything around it. Scott, it was spectacular. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Stephen. It was a, it was a pleasure having you, and I, I hope you can come back again soon.